What's up everybody? Come on in closer. I'm gonna tell you some secrets that the professionals have been keeping from you for years. These ancient tips that personal trainers have been hiding from you. In fact, if your personal trainer found out I was telling this stuff, he'd probably wanna kill me. I'm gonna teach you how to create your own program. Your program should in some way resemble a pyramid. You will start at the bottom of your pyramid and work your way up to the top. The top of your pyramid should be your goal. This could be a competition, a meet, or simply a date on the calendar when you want to test your one rep max. This training pyramid could represent three months, six months, or even a year. I've broken this pyramid down into three phases. Phase one, phase two, phase three. During phase one, we are building a strong base with lots of exercises and lots of volume. The purpose of phase one is to build some muscle, increase muscular endurance, increase overall work capacity, improve GPP or general physical preparedness, and to practice technique. A lot of people skip phase one and go straight to phase three. They want to lift as much weight as they can right now. They want to handle competition weight right now. This is a huge mistake. Without phase one, you have no foundation. Phase two. Now that we're on to phase two, we're going to start being a little bit more specific with our exercise selection. We're going to start getting rid of some of the exercises that don't have a huge carryover to our goal. We're also going to slightly lower the overall training volume. Instead of doing four different exercises for our biceps, we might cut it down to one or two. Now that we've lowered the volume, we're going to start increasing the weight. And finally, we're moving on to phase three. During phase three, we've got our eyes on the prize. Your exercise selection should be very specific. We're going to start cutting out a lot of those assistance exercises that don't have a huge carryover to our goal. Okay, sweet, Alan. That sounded real scientific, but it didn't make a whole lot of sense increase overall work capacity. Let's take, for example, an Olympic weightlifter. During phase one, he's gonna be building a strong base, lots of volume, lots of exercises. He's gonna be doing clean snatches, squats, front squats, jerks, push press, strict press, complexes. He's gonna be training twice a day, six days a week, building a solid foundation and perfecting his technique with rep after rep after rep. He makes his way up through phase two, and once he gets to phase three, his exercise selection is very specific to his meat. He's gonna do clean and jerk and snatch, and that's probably it. He's probably gonna reduce his training frequency also. Now let's look at strongman. During phase one, they're gonna build a solid base with lots of squats, deadlifts, overhead presses, probably a bodybuilding routine, and some weighted carries. Doesn't matter what the weighted carries are, yoke, sandbag, keg, farmer's walks, they're just gonna do a lot of them. They're gonna move up through phase two, and once they're at phase three, their training is very event specific. This is a little harder to determine because the events at all strongman competitions vary. If one of the events at your show is a max log, you'd better get some practice with a heavy log on your chest. If you have a max rep deadlift event, you should probably get good at doing touch and go deadlifts for a whole minute. For those of you who don't compete in any of these sports, I would treat my programming similar to a power lifter. And instead of having a meet day, I would just have a max out day at the gym. On top of all this, I'm gonna give you a couple programming tips to take into consideration before you start programming for yourself. Tip number one, every day should in some way build upon the last training session. That doesn't always mean you have to lift more weight. It could be more sets with a given weight, more reps with a given weight, or even less time resting between sets. Be creative and figure out ways to challenge and better yourself every day. Tip number two, you should have a reason for doing every exercise you're performing. If you're not sure what this exercise is doing to help you reach your goal, you probably shouldn't be doing it. Doing stuff in the gym that has no carryover to your goal is probably a waste of time. What the hell are you doing? 
Oh, me? Just trying to increase my core strength. That's it. There you go. The blueprint to a perfect program. Wait, that's it? What about sets and reps? Do I do four sets of 10 or five sets of 10? What assistance exercises should I do? When do I incorporate arms? What do I do if the gym is closed? What if it's raining? If you're that worried about these types of questions, you can just buy an ebook or a program online from a credible strength athlete. Chances are, they know what they're talking about and their program works. You could pay for online coaching and have them take all the guesswork out by telling you exactly what to do. But I know that some of you don't have the extra cash to pay for that type of service. So here's what I suggest. Experiment and find out for yourself what works for you and what doesn't. But what if I fail? What if I mess it all up? What if I do it all wrong? What if I don't get the results I'm looking for by summer? Good. At least you're learning what works for you and what doesn't. Learning is all a part of the process. And your own personal experience is more valuable than anything you will ever pay for on the internet. Don't be afraid to make some mistakes. Get out there and create your own program. I saw an awesome quote this past weekend. It said, if you don't love the process, you don't deserve success. So that's it. Now that you know a little bit more about programming, you can tell which programs are good, which ones are bad, or you can just create your own. And always remember, Trenton 10.